From the man who brought you such things as his dolphin based item sorting, I introduce to you dolphin based auto crafting. It's so stupid, but it just works. G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here. In this video, we're going to go ahead and try and build a dolphin based auto crafter capable of sustaining up to 4.6 million crafting operations per hour. Now I should probably be more specific and point out that this particular autocrafter that we'll be building is nothing like the autocrafters that I made previously on this channel, which involve the use of a mod which implements the autocrafting table. In fact, autocrafter is probably not the correct terminology to even use for this particular contraption we'll be building. Instead, what we'll be making is more of a semi-automatic mass crafter, which makes use of a client-side mod known as item scroller, which has been developed by Master and Andrews, although I'm not quite sure that's really Master's account. In case you're unfamiliar with Item Scroller, you might actually already have it. It is a very common client utility mod, which adds some nice things for inventory management, such as being able to shift and drag items out of inventories, like so, or being able to control click individual items out of stacks, and being able to hold down shift and drag over the top of items like so. All of these things are features added by mods such as Item Scroller, and these are specifically client utility mods. And what that means is I can go ahead and join any vanilla Minecraft server with these mods installed on my game and use them. Although some caution is advised as some servers do not take kindly to players using their own mods. What I have on my client right now is a specific version of Item Scroller optimized for mass crafting. With the mod installed, if I hold down I and then C, I can open up the configuration menu for the mod. If I go over to generic, at the very top we have this option known as mass craft hold. This will be important for later on. In order to use the mass crafting, I want to start by setting up the recipe. I'll open up the crafting table, hold down the A key, and this GUI will open up right here. What I'm going to do is pop in a redstone block, then I'm going to go over to the recipe output and use the middle click on my mouse. Now I've assigned that recipe to this slot. If I then go ahead into my item scroller menu and activate the mass craft hold, the moment I open up this crafting table, watch what happens. Boom. I've just mass crafted all of those redstone blocks into their constituent components. And just make sure you go ahead and disable the option if you want to go ahead and use the inventory. As you may have noticed, we crafted those items very quickly. In fact, the speed at which you could ramp up that crafting process is mainly limited by how many packets that the player can handle and also how many items the server can handle at once. So mass crafting through the item scroller mod is a great way to automate the process of crafting enormous amount of items very quickly in a way which is actually compatible with a vanilla game. And in order to automate this process, all we need to do is deliver the items directly to the player. Normally the way in which players do this is by placing down a whole heap of shulker boxes full of crafting ingredients and unloading them all at once into water streams which deliver the items to a centralized location where the player will stand and mass craft all of the items. However, one night as I lay in my bed going to sleep, I had a spontaneous admonition. Why go through the effort of building a massive machine to unload boxes, when you can, in fact, just delete the boxes and throw all the items on the floor? And in fact, this works remarkably well for mass crafting like so. That was literally 27 boxes of redstone dust compacted into 3 boxes of redstone blocks in under 10 seconds. That was about 1.7 million crafting operations per hour. So that worked brilliantly for converting one item into a different item. But then of course, what happens if I want to do a more complicated recipe? There we go, all the ingredients needed to craft pistons. Let's go ahead and set up the recipe. There we go. Mass crafting enabled. Let's go ahead and craft pistons. Ah, shucks. What's going on here? 
as you can clearly tell, just dumping a whole heap of ingredients at the player simply does not work. All that happened is my inventory just completely filled up with one of the ingredients and so I can't actually craft any pistons. Yeah, we definitely need a smarter way of doing this. And amazingly, it turns out that the solution involves our little flipper friends. Yes, dolphins do turn out to be the most underrated feature in Minecraft. Watch this absolute magic as this dolphin takes this full box of redstone dust and spreads it out into a continuous item stream. And it turns out that this continuous item stream is exactly what we need to help us with our mass crafting. So what we can do is assign a dolphin to unload the items for a single crafting slot. So because a dolphin can handle a single stack every single game tick, and a shulker box has exactly 27 stacks of items, we want to unload an entire box every single 27 game ticks, which is what this clock right here does. I'll be using these command blocks right here to automate the process of simply filling it up for demonstration purposes. So if I hit this button and start up this clock, you can then see every single one of our dolphins starts unloading items in perfect synchronization. And then the items start to get pretty damn laggy after a while. In fact, this is already proving to be a very serious issue. Oh god, that was over 2,000 item entities. So that's actually a serious problem. We actually need to use the player in order to craft these items into other items. However, the players are going to be much use if they drop to 0 frames per second. And of course, if the player starts to lag, the mess crafting will also lag. In order to solve this problem, we can just use nether portals to immediately transport the items into the nether. Where well, the player then receives the items, crafts with them, and then gets rid of them as quickly as possible to absolutely minimize the amount of lag that the client experiences. This means that we want to make sure that the player can control the farm from the nether without having to go to the overworld and experience all the item lag. What I've got here is a simple button to start the crafter which leads all the way up to a chunk loader and just above it I have this system which is used for signaling the overworld side. So of course this signal is sent to the overworld in the form of a minecart being sent through a nether portal. When a minecart comes through the portal we can then detect it and activate a circuit which will start up the auto crafter. So now I'll just go ahead and load all of these chests with the redstone dust and over on the nether side, I get myself set up with the redstone block recipe. Activate the mass crafting. Hit the button. Open up the crafting table. And now, items should start streaming in like so. But then of course, we also need to add a circuit to tell the farm to turn off, which I'll do in a moment. And later on, we'll need to figure out what to do with all of these crafted items. In order to allow the mass crafter to turn off again once the player has finished crafting, I've also got this second instant wire, which goes up to the same dispenser, which will simply send the minecart through again, toggling the system into the off state. This also acts as a safety measure, because if the player stops crafting for any reason, we can shut off the crafter immediately and stop sending items as quickly as possible in order to prevent item buildup. That said, the latency between the nether and the overworld, using the minecart communication, is rather slow, so it can take a little bit to shut down. So that's cool. We can now do simple recipes such as compacting redstone into redstone blocks. But what about our more complex recipes? Let's go ahead and load up the ingredients for pistons. So of course the first three slots are planks, we've got cobblestone in there, iron in the very center, and redstone at the very bottom. And after doing all of that, I realized that they don't even need to be in order. All that you need to do is make sure that you have the same amount of each ingredient for each crafting slot. So once again, I'll make sure I have the recipe for a piston selected, then I'll activate my mass crafting toggle, hit the button, and then start crafting pistons. And while I'm crafting all this, 
Just take a moment to note how consistent the items were appearing in my inventory. Oh, there we go. The system was automatically shut down. In the overworld, we can see all of our items stacked up together. I'll go ahead and use copper counters to count exactly how many pistons we just crafted. And unfortunately, I may have forgotten that even hopper counters have a limit of the amount of items that they can count. In this case, the max amount of items that a hopper counter can actually handle is 500,000 per hour. However, we were crafting 4.6 million pistons per hour. We're going to need a faster hopper counter. And it's taken so long to count the items that a bunch of them just despawned. So this is giving us a slight hint into what problem we're going to encounter next. We are crafting items at a minimum speed of 4.6 million items per hour. That's this number per hour. A hopper can only handle 9,000 items per hour. So we will need about 512 hoppers in order to handle even the minimum crafting speed. And I say minimum crafting speed, because we can get even higher speeds depending on crafting yields. Crafting either iron bars or glass panes for example, yields 16 items, bringing the crafting speed up to 73.7 million items per hour. But it still doesn't even stop there. If I go ahead and put a block such as redstone blocks, into every single one of the nine crafting slots here. Every single one of these slots is being unloaded at 4.6 million items per hour. The result was 373.2 million items per hour. However, I would not recommend doing this because my client literally ground into a halt. Needless to say, loading shulker boxes with items by conventional means is going to be completely futile. Well that's great. We can craft items at eyewater only fast speeds, but doing so, it's not even possible to even store the items. However, that's where the benefits of a two-dimensional crafting system really start to shine. Our portal based chunk loader produces this 3x3 grid of entity processing chunks. Around these entity processing chunks, we have what are known as redstone processing chunks. Inside these redstone processing chunks, all of your bog standard redstone components work perfectly fine, like hoppers, comparators, repeaters, torches, pistons, all these components work perfectly fine inside of these particular chunks. However, entities, for example, minecarts, cannot move, item entities, do not get processed, Pretty much everything relating the entities don't get processed. However, even though the item entities aren't being processed, the game still knows that they are there. They are still loaded into the game's memory. And this can become evident by the fact that hoppers can still actually collect items inside of lazy chunks, like so. So inside of redstone processing chunks, even though entities are not being processed, item entities can still be accessed by other components. So what we will do is while we are crafting items, our crafted results will go into a lazy chunk right over here, just inside of the border. When the crafting is finished, we will then push the items over into the range of a dolphin. And the amazing thing is that dolphins can actually pull items out of lazy chunks if they are entity processing. So right on this chunk border here, we have entity processing chunks where the dolphin is. And in here, redstone processing, meaning our items will not get processed and therefore will not contribute any lag. We can, however, have a redstone mechanism interact with the items and push them across into the range of our dolphin when we want them. We will then send the items one at a time back through the portals where the player will use this lightning fast shulker box loading station 
to manually load the boxes. Because it turns out that the fastest shocker box loader is the player. Wow, that's a lot to take in. So let's go through it step by step. You start by loading your ingredients into the chest. Once all of your ingredients are in, you go to the nether and stand in this booth. Make sure you have your recipe selected and that you have mass crafting enabled. Then simply hit the button, click on this crafting table and you will start the mass crafting process. And once the crafting process is done, all of our crafted results have gone into the redstone processing chunk and will never despawn provided that the player stays in the nether. So all I need to do is hop on over across to the other side, hit this button, make sure that you disable your mass crafting toggle, and soon the items should start streaming in and you can start loading them into the boxes. And once all the items have been loaded into boxes, we have all the results right here. This process of manually loading the boxes might get quite tedious for extremely large crafting operations. But in terms of medium range crafting operations like what we've done here, it's actually extremely streamlined. Like, can we just for a moment appreciate how stupidly compact this is for an auto crafter that's capable of crafting 4.6 million items per hour? I've even gone ahead and tested this on a creative server where I have pretty awful ping. And even with complicated recipes like pistons, it works perfectly. However, on multiplayer servers, I found this sort of annoying issue with the box loaders. Where as you move all the items into an inventory, you have this tendency to throw a stack on the ground in front of you. Which is the reason why I've built up this box loader setup with these walls and slabs which keep all the items contained on the floor in front of you. And my god. That is 27 shocker boxes of pistons done in less than a minute. To say what you want about dolphin based mass crafting, I will admit the amount of shocker boxes that you burn through with lava by simply destroying them to unload them is rather excessive. But hey, you can always craft more. However, of course, storing them is going to be a bit of a challenge. But of course, you're not very fond of deleting industrial amount of shulker boxes every time you want to mass craft items. There's no reason why we can't just apply the principle of using the portals to transport the items and the dolphins to spread them out evenly on a regular shulker box unloading array. In fact, I think it'll be a pretty cool technical challenge for you guys to see if you can make an adaptation of this design work without deleting shulker boxes. The constraints will include having to fit the whole system inside the chunk grid of the chunk loader. However, a handy tip that you can use is that the dimensions of the portal actually affect where the items come out. Like if you look at where the water streams enter these portals, the items actually come out of exactly the same position relative to the size of the portal. This means you could easily scale the system vertically and simply align additional rows of box unloaders dumping items into the same relative positions of the portals. So try and experiment with some solutions yourself and I'd love to see what you come up with. As for this particular system, I'll be leaving a world download down the description. Some important things to look at will be the positions I've chosen to put the portals in the overworld and the nether respectively. And just like with my modded autocrafters, I have some interesting ideas for how I might be able to implement recipe scheduling in this particular design. However, that will have to wait for another video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.